There is truly no country in the world like Lebanon. There's no city in the world like Beirut. The Mediterranean, the famous food and wine, the snow-capped mountains in view, an hour's drive away. It's a literal crossroads for ancient and modern trade and culture on the western edge of Asia and a place flowing over with life about whom its residents, native or adopted, are fiercely passionate. And yet, scratch the surface, as if in an increasingly troubling conversation with someone whose face is cheerful but whose scattered words reveal a mind in turmoil, to come to know Lebanon is to come to know a place abused by history, especially recent history. And accusing history is really a euphemism. We are talking about unjust power, colonialism, occupation, vested interests and corruption. Syrian tanks left in 2005, Israelis in 2000, civil war ended in 1990, colonial France handed over the Paris of the East in 1946. But no rainbow democracy took root here in the ground cleared by these Pyrrhic liberations. The seed of confessionalism, sown through the constitution itself, bears the fruit of sectarianism and vested interests to this day. Behind the sunlit facades, we see this fruit, in partly finished haphazard buildings, in every piece of redundant infrastructure, and in every darkened apartment whose residents are waiting their turn to have electricity. And in the camps, Palestinian and Syrian refugees, who together make up a third of the population, live subject to another layer of factionalism transplanted from their homelands, left largely to their own devices, by the already stretched and beleaguered Lebanese state. All of this before 2019, when civil disobedience and protests coincided with the collapse of the Lebanese economy, of which the COVID-19 pandemic has been a catalyst, with Lebanon becoming the first Middle Eastern country in history to experience hyperinflation. So many of those who never before struggled to make ends meet have swollen the numbers of those at the margins of society by being dragged into poverty, some into extreme poverty. And it is here, with safety nets so few and far between, that Embrace the Middle East's partners strive to meet the unfulfilled needs of the most vulnerable. A clinic, a place of inclusion for people with disabilities, a kindergarten, a centre providing skills training for those unable to afford education, and perhaps as importantly providing a place of sanctuary and beauty. And down the pothole road from here, another partner has facilitated marginalised women sewing protective face masks to sell and generate an income through the pandemic. But then as if Lebanon needed further injury, an explosion greater perhaps than any non-nuclear event the world has ever seen. Inevitably, accusations abound, mismanagement, poor regulation, neglect, corruption, foul play. The government has resigned, but all we know is that 300,000 people have seen their homes damaged or destroyed, most knowing someone among the thousands injured and over 160 people killed. All of our Beiruti partners have lost property. All of them, no people killed or injured. Many of them now have staff newly at risk and financially hard pressed. So is this the straw that breaks the camel's back? Is this the moment our partners throw up their hands and give up? No, instead we hear from them. We know God is with us. We hear from them about their mobilising young people from the Palestinian camp of Dubaia to help out with the clean-up operation at the port. We see the work of another partner whose student accommodation, which is vacant because of Covid, is now a place of refuge for homeless victims of the explosion. Instead of asking only, why us? They are also asking, where next? Where next do they demonstrate this love of God, demonstrate their trust in his kingdom at work, through this kind of mustard seed gesture. It is for this turn to hope through love that Embrace the Middle East exists, to magnify it and make it powerful and effective across the Middle East, including today in Lebanon.
We invite you to be part of this with us, with our inspirational partners and with the people of Lebanon.